The FCGA findings reveal that despite notable progress in some areas, such as education, critical challenges continue to hold back the empowerment of Fijian women and girls in all diversities. Gender discriminatory social norms and cultural practices remain a significant obstacle to gender equality in Fiji. Women's participation in the formal economy and labor force is significantly lower than that of men. And most working Fijian women are engaged in informal employment with lack of job security, irregular income, and no social protection. <coughs> Our women and girls might not be well positioned to secure work in emerging digital and technical fields, limiting their opportunities for economic empowerment in the context of the future of jobs. Cancers of reproductive organs, particularly breast and cervical cancer, are the leading causes of death related to non-communicable diseases among Fijian women. Moreover, violence against women and girls is still pervasive, with appalling high rates of sexual violence and other forms of gender-based violence. Women in Fiji shoulder three quarters of the unpaid care work at home. The labor force participation rate for women is 46%, compared with 83% of men. Only 40% of women are employed, compared with 78% of men. And women earn, on average, one third less than men. People aged 15 to 24 years who are not in education, employment, or training is 18%, with young women most affected from that 18%. Three times the rate for young men. This rate has not substantially changed in the recent years. It is important to note that these statistics are in the context where women outnumber men among students in academic programs in Fiji's universities, accounting for 60 to 65 percent of students and over 50 percent of graduates. The 21st century workplace requires that nearly everyone have digital skills. The gender parity ratio of girls to boys enrolled in secondary level home economics courses is 15 or greater. In contrast, the gender parity ratio is less than one for digital and other applied technology courses. There is a tendency for some parents and teachers to reinforce cultural beliefs that science, digital, and other technologies, engineering and mathematics education is masculine and falsely implies that girls are innately inferior in these fields. Yet the data confirms that Fijian <laughs> girls in secondary school enrolled in computer courses often outnumber and outperform boys. Honorable Speaker, men's violence against women is normalized in Fiji and in the family dynamic recurring from one generation to the next. Over the course of the lives of, of partnered Fijian women, nearly two-thirds, Honorable Speaker, 64% experience intimate partner violence including physical violence, 61%, and emotional violence, 58%. This is higher than the global average, honorable speaker, of one to every three women. More than four in 10 women experience severe physical violence, including 50% of women who are physically attacked during pregnancy. In Fiji, the most common, common force of sexual violence is child sexual abuse involving girls and some boys under the age of 18, accounting for 74% of all reported sexual violence cases. In the year 2020, Honorable Speaker, four in 10 women were not able to make their own informed decisions about their reproductive health rights. Cervical and breast cancers are the most common forms of cancers among women. In 2020, the age-specific incidence of breast cancer was 65.1 cases per 100,000 Fijian women, while the related mortality rate was 41 cases per 100,000 Fijian women. The age-specific incidence of cervical cancer 
was 22.5 cases per 100,000 Fijian women, while the mortality rate was nine cases per 100,000 Fijian women. This means, Honorable Speaker, approximately 293 cases of breast cancer, 293 cases of breast cancer, and approximately 184 deaths from breast cancer. My apologies. In 293 cases of breast cancer, there were 184 deaths. And for cervical cancer, with 120 cases a year, 90 results in death. Please note that the above data and statistics were just a brief snapshot of the challenges and issues identified by the Fiji Country Gender Assessment. I would like to invite and urge all members of parliament and relevant stakeholders to, take, to undertake a deep dive and study of this document, findings and policy recommendations. Honorable Speaker, as the Honorable Prime Minister stressed last night in the launch, behind these numbers are the stories of real lives. Lives that have been impacted by gender inequality and discrimination. Lives that are waiting for us to take action and make a difference. Honorable Speaker, with utmost commitment and dedication, I would like to highlight that moving forward, the Fiji Country Gender Assessment is expected to serve as a primary guide for all our policies, programs, and budget allocations. Specifically, we will focus on women's economic empowerment, prevention of gender-based violence before it starts, women's leadership, reproductive health rights, and the future of work in the context of the climate crisis, technology, and the digital revolution, as well as inclusive gender data and statistics. I would like to emphasize, too, that addressing the complex issues and challenges identified by the FCGA requires a collective effort by the whole of government and opposition and the whole of the population. These issues cannot be solved by any single individual agency or sector alone. It is essential to recognize the interrelated nature of these challenges and adopt a multi-sectoral and coordinated and transformative and inclusive approach that fosters partnership, collaboration and shared responsibility to address gender equality in our society. <coughs> Honorable Speaker, in the coming months, the Ministry will be rolling out key whole-of-government initiatives, including the development of the Fiji Women's Economic Empowerment Plan 2023 to 2028, the rollout of the upcoming Fiji National Action Plan to prevent violence against all women and girls 2023 to 2028, and of course the phase two of the gender transformative institutional capacity development initiative, or ICD, which has so far done a pilot project for nine ministries on the world as speaker. With, gen with specifics on gender responsive budgeting. As we undertake these initiatives, we are looking forward to working with all government agencies. We are look looking forward to working with lead of opposition and opposition caucus, and of course the relevant stakeholders to ensure the effective implementation of the Fiji country gender assessment findings and recommendations across all settings and sectors. I want to emphasize, Honorable Speaker, that this document is not based on just any modeling of data. It's based on actual data provided by FIBOS. And I want to thank the former CEO for um, the Bureau of Statistics who was present last night as part of the panel because he was chair of the Data Steering Committee and who was very um, uh, instrumental in helping for this data to be provided despite the challenges. We must use the power of data to change our lives through evidence-based policies, programs, and budget allocations. This, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members of Parliament, is the first step to promoting gender equality based on facts, based on statistics, and to address gender equalities.